Hey guys, Eric here. Just wanted to do a quick screen share on Canopy Growth. Obviously, the earnings were released this morning and it was up about 22% uh, pre market. So it raised kind of the entire pot stock sector a little bit higher. A lot of the stocks like Tilray and Kronos, you know, spiked up 10% and then they've kind of pulled back. Uh, most of them are up maybe 4%, but there, there's a few like Hexo that um, is quite a bit higher and Canopy Growth. It's kind of been bouncing around between 15 and 22% throughout the day. And there's a couple hours left here um, before closing bell. But, uh, you know, here's, here's the uh, Canopy Growth uh, third quarter fiscal 2020 financial results. And they generated $124 million in net revenue. And that was up $76 million from Q2 of 2020. Um, so that's pretty significant. Net revenue up 13%, achieved gross margin of 34%, and total operating expenses are down 14% versus prior quarter. Adjusted EBITDA loss uh, decreased to 92 million. So there's a lot of positives in here, obviously. Um, you know, it, the, whole, the whole sector has been beaten down. Uh, you know, I've been an, an investor in this, in this, uh, in this sector for, going on four years now. And, you know, I was able to take a lot of profits on some of the stocks like Aurora, where I bought Aurora cannabis at a buck 50 and sold it at, you know, 10. And I still actually hold a few shares, but those are house kind of shares. And I know a lot of people out there um, are bag holding and are disgruntled about the sector and rightfully, you know, rightfully so. But with that said, there will be winners in this sector that will rise from the ashes. The question is who, will the, who you know, who will they be? Now, Canopy Growth, I mean, if you're investing in a Canadian, you know, pot stock company, they are backed by Constellation Brands, as you know, ticker STZ. They've got leadership in there, um, you know, that is basically from Constellation Brands. It's being controlled very heavily by Constellation Brands. They're doing things like decreasing um, how the executives are paid through stock compensation. They're trying to help with the dilution that we've seen from so many companies like Aurora that just kept diluting shares and diluting shares. So you can see here the reported net revenue increased 62% over Q2 2020. Um, I wanted to kind of just point out some of these highlights here. So they maintained a leading market share in retail, estimated 22%, which is significant of the Canadian uh, recreation market. It says they, they saw a strong demand for both premium and value price dried flour as well as pre-rolled joints and uh, continued market share gains increase in the number of patients over 76,700 in the Canadian medical cannabis market. They named uh, David Klein as the new CEO, obviously Bruce Linton out and uh, completed first shipments of the chocolate. So obviously cannabis 2.0 started kind of getting ramped up a little bit later than anticipated. Um, f you know, for a lot of these companies started December really didn't get kicked off until January. And here we are mid February. So, I still think there, there, is, there are some growth drivers for a handful uh, of these companies with the Cannabis 2.0. It's yet to be seen what the demand will be, if it's going to be more on chocolate, or if it's going to be more on drinks, et cetera. I mean, obviously, Hexo has a partnership with uh, uh, Coors, Molson and Coors. Uh, that stock ticker is TAP. You've got Constellation Brands that's working with, with Canopy Growth, as we mentioned earlier. And there's, there's a lot of things going on um, you know, in the sector. So... They also have the, uh, the expanded product line for vaporizers, it says in 2019 of November, and then a fit, announced an initial line of first and free hemp derived CBD products and began uh, online sales through firstandfree.com, one quarter ahead of their, their 2020 Q4 target. It says in Q3, we executed across Canada in our international markets and in our st uh, strategic acquisitions to drive revenue growth, said David Klein. We have a lot of work to do. We are eager to capitalize on the opportunity to create position through tight focus on the consumer and critical markets. We delivered significant gross improvement in the third quarter driven by stronger revenues and higher capacity utilization. Actions taken earlier this year are expected to be meaningful and reduce stock-based compensation. I mentioned that earlier, stock-based compensation reduction is, is gonna be a new driver in the, mar in, the, in the market, I think. Wall Street really liked seeing that uh, because it's been a huge problem for the sector. And uh, we plan to take further steps to reduce our costs and right size our business to ensure we can generate a healthy margin profile and cash generation in the coming years. Obviously, that's what you know investors want to 
want to see. That's what they want to hear. So the, the message is really strong here. That's why you saw a rise in the sector. You know, here are some of the numbers if you're interested in, in taking a look at the numbers. But you can see um, the international medical. Uh, I thought this was interesting. It's up 593%. And then they have other revenue up 345%, which I thought was interesting. Uh, recreational B2B sales increased 8% due to over 140 stores becoming active in the quarter. Obviously that's positive. International, it says C3 revenue increased 5% over Q2. Germany cannabis sales higher than expected due to opportunistic sales in the German market. That's been a big market for a handful of these providers. And then the strategic acquisitions, Stortz and Bickel Vaporizer, and then the works revenue increased 42% over prior quarter. Due to strong organic growth, here are some of the revenue highlights. The dry cannabis, you can see um, from 47.4 to 55.8, and it's showing a change of 42%. The cannabis oil actually is down 86%. Dry cannabis uh, up 24 here for the recreational business to consumer. And then the cannabis oil and soft gel is up 183%. So you can see some kind of mixed results, but some really strong numbers in there too. And then the adjusted EBITDA, you can see the loss was not nearly as, as much as expected. Um, you know, Q2 2020 was 155.7 and now 91.7. So obviously we're still not, you know, blowing the doors off with profit profitability or anything like that, but it's, it's a step in the right direction. And I think that's what, uh, that's what investors got excited about from this earnings. So just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, obviously I've said this from, from day one, this sector is, is what I call a uh, spec bucket. So I never recommend that ever, you know, anybody go out and just buy, um, you know, all pot stocks in your portfolio. You know, in my opinion, I do it as a percentage. Uh, it's, it's a high risk speculative bucket that I invest in pot stocks and I have, you know, a handful of them. You know, I like um, Ianthus, I have some Ianthus, I have some Green Thumb, I have some Planet 13, I have some True Leaf, I have some Charlotte's Web and so on. So there's, there's, there's quite a few uh, in my speculative basket. So for those of you that aren't into, you know, pot stocks that are watching the channel, um, you know, it's, it's something for, for growth. It's something that, you know, you definitely could get a massive return on. These are, these are where bagger stocks are found. So there, there will be people that will make a lot of money in this sector. There already are a lot of people that made money in this sector, but by no means is this industry dead. It's just a matter of figuring out who the winners are going to be, and that's going to take some time to sort out. So appreciate you watching this video. We, I do have an entire playlist that I'll put up that has other uh, pot stock videos if you're interested in that sector. And please take a look at that playlist. I think there's maybe 10, 10 other videos. Please subscribe because I do mix in these videos from time to time. I appreciate your time today. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.